Hi everyone, I'm Carly Gallagher and this is your video on how to read your BA BIA report. Um, you will have received this either via email or you would have been given it in a consultation with me and uh, this will help you go through it if you need a refresher or if it's your first time understanding it. So I ran through a low voltage electrical current if you remember and that sent back information around what your fat mass is, what your muscle mass is, also how much fluid you have and also the health of your cell. So this is the, what the report will tell me or will tell you about each of those parameters. The first one we come to is total weight. Now total weight is made up of those components, fat, muscle, fluid, and this gives us an indication of what your total weight is at the current point and what where you should be from an ideal perspective. So this is really putting you or benchmarking you with people your age, height and sex across the globe and where you ideally should be sitting. Now, let's not focus too much about total weight because the real important part of the BIA analysis is trying to get as close to ideal with our fat mass and muscle mass. So let's go on to that. Below you'll see fat mass. Again, it tells you your total fat mass in kilograms and what your ideal fat mass in kilograms should be. And this will also give you a percentage of total um, fat mass. So for those people who are looking to get to a percentage of fat, this is a good indicator for you there. The one that I really focus on is what's your ideal a difference from ideal. So how much fat should you need to lose to get your ideal range? So from a fat mass perspective, if you think about it, how do you burn fat? Well, you burn fat by eating the right foods, um, exercising correctly. Um, but the big clincher for burning fat is muscle building. Let's go down to the muscle component below, which is called active tissue mass, which is pretty much a lean muscle mass. So you'll see again, active tissue mass in kilograms and ideal active tissue mass in kilograms and a difference from ideal. What you want to be looking for is above ideal. You want to be carrying a little bit more muscle mass. The reason why we want to carry more muscle mass is important twofold. One muscle mass, um, helps with protecting your skeletal frame, um, so it prevents muscle injuries or um, you, um, breaks. The other th good important thing about having more than ideal muscle mass is that it, it helps you grow more cells. And the more cells you have, the more energy you have, and we all want more energy, don't we? Now, men will carry normally um, more than um, the... Uh, ideal, which is great, but women traditionally always probably forget to focus on building muscle. They're more focused on burning fat. Now, the way to burn fat is to build muscle. If you focus on resistance style training, you will burn more muscle because it's a larger group of, of your body. And to build muscle requires a huge amount of energy. So your body will dip into your fat storage as a a source of fuel to build more muscle. Now, just as important as building muscle and burning fat is making sure that you've got adequate health in order to do that. And this is where it comes down to your ATM quality index. Now that says ATM is your active tissue mass. How good is that quality of that active tissue mass, i.e. How good are your cells? Because muscles are just a big bunch of cells. So this is where we're looking at, okay, how healthy is your cell walls? Now, to build cells, you need critical ingredients, just like baking a cake. So we need good essential fatty acids, um, minerals, vitamins, a little bit like an eggshell, you know, it's made up of all those critical ingredients. Now, if you don't have enough of those ingredients, then that eggshell will be soft and spongy, and that's not going to help the, the egg um, or the chicken grow. So from a human perspective, if you don't have an adequate diet, if you perhaps uh, have inflammation or too much stress, and that's 
um, affecting your digestive system, which means that you're not assimilating and absorbing all those vital um, vitamins and minerals, then it's not going to get into the cell wall. So this is a barometer that says, okay, well, how healthy is your cells? And you can use that to determine then whether you're getting enough ingredients to help build more muscle mass. Now, if you're up above average, then fantastic. If you're in excellent, then great. It's saying that you're top shape in terms of cellular health. If you're down here in average and poor, what that says to me is a few things. I would start questioning um, you about how much protein you eat. I'd also question um, how your lifestyle is. Is it um, overly stressful? Um, another few things that come into this equation is hormones. And quite often if we see adrenal fatigue or um, other you know, um, hormonal issues, you can see a drop in the quality of the cell health. Now, why that is important is that if you don't have adequate cell health, then your body is going to be stressed and laboring. And so any exercise that you do or diet change that you make is going to add more stress to the body. And that may then just put you into a state where your body won't burn the fat and build the muscle like you intended it to be. So it's really important that if you haven't got um, good quality cell health, that you speak to a health practitioner like myself and really get down to the nitty gritty of potentially what the cause is. And then we can help you build and support your body to a healthier state and you'll get the maximum um, result then out of the challenge that you're doing or the goals, that's health goals that you're, you're hoping for. Over here to the side is a phase angle. Now that's just a fancy name for um, an angle that we call uh, your healthy aging angle. So anything above six for a woman is where we want to be sitting and anything above seven for a man is where we want to be sitting. So if you're below those for your sex, then it really indicates that your trajectory to uh, a long and healthy life is suboptimal. The better you are in terms of getting to your ideals and the healthier you are in your cells will drive this phase angle. Below that is your patient age, so what your age is now at the time of the report, and then you'll get a biomarker index. Now, that biomarker index is what your body is acting like at the moment. So if you're... Um, two or three years younger than your age, then it's probably indicating that you're doing really well in terms of your other parameters up here. If you're over your age, then we've got a bit of work to do. Now that will drop significantly when you get closer to those ideal ranges and you've got some really good cell health happening. So don't worry, by the end of your challenge, I'm sure that you'll drop a few years and you'll feel much better for it. Below there, you'll see a fat mass ratio and fat distribution. So a normal fat distribution is really looking at what your centimetres are around your waist. Now, the guidelines or the cardiac guidelines for um, healthy fat distribution is um, women need to be under 80 centimetres and men need to be under 92 centimetres. So if you're above the ideal for your sex, then you might come up here into a moderate or even high risk fat distribution. And that really is an indicator for you to say, okay, well, if I'm carrying extra weight around my waist, then I'm carrying extra adipose tissue, and that's the brown fat. Now, the brown fat mimics hormonal um, 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 surges, so you may then have imbalances. It also hugs around your vital organs. And this is the problem with when it comes to cardiac health or endocrine health is that you really need to get a, an optimal circumference around your weight, waist. I don't care if you've got a JLo butt or big thighs because, you know, we all need a little bit of that, especially if you're a crossfitter. But um, if you're carrying extra around your waist, then it's suggestive that you've pr probably got a little bit too much fat around the waist and making um, um, more focus on your fat mass distribution will be um, the key focus for you from a health perspective. 
Now, the next two parameters below here is cellular fluid balance and hydration. Now, those two barometers work off the second page of your report. So, let's switch to the second page of your report just quickly and we'll go through those. Your fluid balance up here is in litres and what you're looking for below is your total body water as a percentage. Now, the guidelines for um, adequate body water is above 50%. So you want to be aiming for above 50%. If you're below 50%, then you're suggested to be um, um, a little bit dehydrated. Now, it's also important of where you're carrying the fluid balance. Now, a little bit like a car engine, you want to have adequate fuel or adequate water in that engine, otherwise it will burn out. So intracellular water and extracellular water is the, the water or the fluid inside the cell, the water or the fluid outside the cell. And you want to be carrying more water inside the cell, as I suggested. So you want to be looking for about 60% up here, intracellular, and about 40% extracellular. And if they're not balanced correctly, then you'll see up here ideal extracellular water in litres and where you're currently carrying extracellular water. So I'm not really worried if you're under your or over your ideal by maybe one or two litres. When you get more than two, three, four litres, then that's suggestive of a number of things that I would go through in a consultation with you. Um, it could be injury. Um, so um, inflammation carries excess fluid in the body. Um, it could be that you're, you've got mineral deficiencies where you're not shunting the fluid back and forth across the cell membrane as it's supposed to do and narrowing down on those deficiencies and supplementing will rectify that situation. There's also um, high extracellular fluid when you're carrying too much fat in the cell. So again, using the other page that we just went through, how far away are you from your ideal? And are you carrying a lot of it in this extracellular um, tissue space? Again, if you're having issues with that, troubleshooting um, or even understanding that, then get in contact with me and I can work through that with you. And then finally, down the bottom of the sheet, the only thing that I really, really focus on here is how much water you should be carrying or consuming per day. So, for example, um, in this report, a minimum requirement of 1.3 litres a day plus an hour, a litre for exercise. So for this person, um, you want to be drinking about two and a half litres, say, and that's going to keep this person adequately hydrated. Now, the percentages on the side here, I don't want you to follow too much or even the calories because my belief is it's not about calories in, calories out. It's how many calories you should be having with eating real food that's going to serve your body shape and also your exercise um, regime. And I always work off a 30-40-30 um, percentage, which is 30% protein, 40% carbohydrates, 30% fat for people who are just looking to maintain weight. Obviously, you'd want to go lower percentage in carbohydrates if you're looking to lose weight. And this is where a specialized diet or guidelines that is delivered by your health practitioner or myself would um, knuckle down on. So again... This really is showing you some ideal ranges and it doesn't take into account ethnicity or other um, considerations from a genetic standpoint. It just gives us a broad brush based on your age, sex and height where you should be um, sitting across um, those parameters. And for you, you might be a long way from the ideal and it's about chunking those down into bite-sized pieces and saying okay well for me realistically this is what I'm going to achieve in the next short period and you work work that through with um, your health practitioner. If you have any further questions about this report you can always email me or go to my website it's lifeessential.com.au and I'm more than happy to um, troubleshoot 
certain areas with you. If you're part of a gym challenge, then you get to see me at your next rescan and I can also go through what your changes are. Um, now, I use this scan every visit with my patients so they know from visit to visit how well they're progressing with their health. And from a gym um, perspective, we do a rescan at the beginning, the middle and the end of that challenge to help you troubleshoot your way through um, and make sure that you're getting the, the, the desired result. There's no point in taking it at the beginning and at the end and then you think, oh, well, I haven't changed much. And we haven't had an opportunity to really go, well, okay, are you eating the right foods? Have you got hormonal issues? Have you got good cell health? Have you got mineral deficiencies? You're not going to reach your goals if any of those are in the way and you need to get on top of that sooner rather than later. So make sure if you're in um, that bucket that you speak to me or one of your health practitioners. Um, I'm Carly Gallagher and I hope this has helped you read your report a little bit better.